at the time there was a club in um, in um, Leicester Square called the Home, and um, I remember going there and I used to um, to listen to DJs playing there, um, and I was listening to Oakenfield and I like, I'd like to make a song for him that he's got a vocal because he's definitely gonna wanted to play, and I was scratching my head like, where am I gonna find this singer? And um, and then it just happened that I was walking down one one evening and I, I just bumped into a Piccadilly Circus. And did you right in you? front of uh, where um, um, I think where old Boots used to be? I think Boots then eventually moved. She was singing and and it, it sounded quite quite amazing. And just grabbed a number, arranged for her to come down for an interview. We had an inter a little interview in the studio. We arranged to record the end of the day. And then um, she came down and we just created a track there and then. I knew that right. I wanted a song as opposed to a track because mm. I was making mainly tracks and sometimes with some the odd sound bite, like a little bit of vocal. And um, I had, I was getting ready to release the, to the first release on the label. So I had three releases already done. And then I did a fourth release that I wanted to be more of a song. Mm. Mm. And um, then when I, I created the track, put it on the cassette, because in those days it was just the easiest way to, to move things back and forward instead of bringing my portable DAP machine, which was always breaking down. Um, so, uh, this is Sony. <laughs> oh, so not, not the task. Yeah, no. yeah, they were always eating tape and stuff. So I kind of like was not really using that one. I had a, I had, um, a rack one by then. And, um, so I just used tape in those days to uh, cassette to listen. To, took it home and was listening. I was like, r listening, like stop listening in, stop listening in. I was like, wow, that, this sounds quite incredible. And um, that kind of became um, something that happened to a lot of people that heard the track, including Oakenfold. First time that that he got handed the song in Pache, played it five times that night, and um, it kind of like it became like almost like a, the curse of that song any person that hears that song the first time wants to hear it again and again and again and again and again I mean you say it's a curse but I mean surely yeah <laughs> you can't say you're not proud yeah it's no I am proud but um, eventually I mean it, it was it, it, the, the song became um, it, it, it kind of achieved quite some some incredible um, landmarks like at the time then the, 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 by the end of that summer, I think the uh, summer of 2000, um, we were priming the record really hard, sending it to DJs. Um, people coming back from Ibiza, calling Radio One and asking for that song, and nobody knew, even knew what the song was. So they tried to track down what the song was. That created kind of a, a bidding war between record labels. And um, we, were, we were getting ready to release the record, we put the record up through promote through pr pr pluggers and we presented the record onto radio on playlist which usually you've got one shot if the record doesn't go on a playlist that's it mm. next week there's new records our record went was presented on to playlist for about five weeks non-stop they kept going kept knocking back they kept going kept knocking back and you only, only managed to get into the playlist once I've, I've um, licensed it to to a major mm then they allowed it to go on a playlist and it became the most played record on Radio Radio 1 for 12 weeks. And all of a sudden there was a lot of people that, that thought they knew what I was doing so they were, they, I mean that I kind of like became synonymous of, of, of that sound mm. and then th that, that opened the doors for a lot of people creating v very similar tracks that achieved quite some success as well and um, it kind of created a, a little a little bubble of, uh, of dance music in the UK. I think it became a, like a template for how to construct yeah. a sort of See, dance record, really, in terms of the arrangement and the yeah. almost like the lyrical content and stuff. You know, it's yeah. quite positive. When I was in IBs, I came across someone that I've never heard the song. A girl I was living in and a cave. Uh, no, she's just too young to know. <laughs> and as soon as she heard it, she had exactly the same reaction that everybody had a few a few yeah. years ago, for about ten years before. Mm. Just like, oh, I love this song, can you play again? And it, it's, it's always been like that. It was listening to Oakenfold playing back back in 90, late 98, early 99, at home. 
kind of got inspired a little bit for 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 the sound that he was playing back then, and um, the desire to 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 do something to that w that he would um, appreciate and 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 play, and then just yeah, it just came 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 together like that. I mean, if you're going to have a hit record, it might as well be a massive million multi-selling. <laughs> Enormous one. Yeah, I mean, the well. yeah, the record end up going licensed to I don't know how many compilations, but it's just in compilations probably sold probably close to ten million. Yeah, easy. I remember it it shifting things a little bit at the time. I was um, I'd done some time, um, literally close to some time working um, uh, for record companies uh, as a these days you t they've changed the name to sort of like promotions guy but basically it was hyping teams and uh, and uh, so I was very very aware of what was going on in the charts and and the, the structure of how a record was put together and and what happened during a release and it, it was um, I mean really it's safe to say it was a phenomena that record um, and uh, it's difficult to sometimes they can be those records can be a curse as well because they're mm. difficult to live down because and people tend to want you to to do the same thing I mean I remember when I was asked to work with Republica they had a kind of similar problem I remember when I was asked to work with Republica they had a kind of similar problem because they they wanted to um, they, they were asked to basically to recreate Ready to Go which at the time was a massive Hit all all around the world and licensed to, and, and s they've done hundreds and hundreds of sinks, NHL and NFL and all that sort of stuff in America as well, and um, a big hit like that, like Touch Me, is, you know, it's just difficult to follow up because you're not going to get all the stars to line up every single time, and uh, it's important to remember when a record is that big, it's because everything has just worked, everything, and. Um, and it's it's not so much about how hard you work, um, although the harder you work, the luckier you get. But you need that extra spark of everything lining up for it, for for it to be um, you know monumentally and globally successful like that, something like mm -hmm. that.